Thank you for joining me today. We're continuing our series, The Lies of the Emergent Church. We're going to do a very interesting study today, and it is one of the most uh, deliberate things that this false Main Street Church does. And uh, when I was a false believer in this church system on the Main Street Church circuit, I used to go around doing my testimony, and uh, every single church, I've been to dozens and dozens of churches uh, all over, and um, every single church had one thing in common, false church. They had elaborate, quote, worship music with instruments and bands and loud music and lights and everything else, and it's blasphemous. I used to hear all the time, you have to come hear the music or the worship is the best part. So the title of our teaching today is Exposing the Ungodly, quote, Worship in the False Emergent Church. I always hear, it's not the beat of the music, Jimmy, come on, it's the music. I mean, it's the words that matters. You are legalistic, or I love contemporary Christian music. We are going to prove here. We have hours of study on this, and I'll post the link below. But this is only going to be about an 11, 12-minute video, and um, we're going to go through this real quick. Make no mistake about it. We're going to prove biblically that you should not use instruments in worship in church. Um, scientifically, spiritually, the beats, the rhythm of the music you listen to can literally change your spirit and your uh, and and excuse me and your mood. Music is so influential on the brain that the type you listen to actually has the ability to change the way you think and look at the world. You know, you used to go to hopefully you don't need more, but those wicked Hollywood movies they use music in their movies all the time, Dolby surround systems and everything else. Listen, true worship that is pleasing to God radiates throughout a person's life. Amen? We have nothing personal against musical instruments, but simply believe the church is wiser to continue with the pattern Jesus set. There may be reasons for this pattern which we do not know. We need to obey apostolic doctrines. What the apostles say in the Bible, we are to do. The deceitful emergent false church has one very powerful tool they employ without fail, and it's absolutely deliberate. What is it? It's what they and their false converts call, quote, worship music, and it's used to hypnotize the lost souls. This is true. I've seen it. It's happened to me before I really came to Christ and repented of this. This teaching is going to be a bit different, as I said, than the rest, but bear with me. I'm going to prove within the next few minutes, biblically, that instruments are not used ever in the New Testament as we are commanded to sing. You will not find one Bible verse in the New Testament using musical instruments other than the human voice and you won't find anybody even in the first five, six, seven hundred years that uses instruments in the church. True worship in the assemblies of the early church was patent on the worship in the Jewish synagogues which did not allow instruments because they had been part of the temple worship. When the synagogues developed after the destruction of the first temple, they forbade the use of instruments. And this is so important. The New Testament worship is modeled after synagogue worship, not after the Old Testament up to the, when the first temple was, um, of course, destroyed. Not temple worship. And it's so very important. Listen, God knows best. We have to understand. And now the music has become so blasphemous. I can remember when I was in my car many years ago before I came to the knowledge of this truth. And I was going back and forth from Christian radio station to the next one. Trying to get the song I liked so I could worship the Lord. Come on. I wasn't worshiping the Lord. I was worshiping the song or the artist. All those artists that are on the radio and that are popular are all part of the beast system. They're all demonic, and we have video after video exposing them. I mean, they're just blatantly demonic, and I will show you uh, in the in the uh, teaching below how contemporary Christian music is uh, of the devil. Amen? The deceitful emergent church uses the, quote, lights, camera, and action music to put their deceived flock in a dumbed-down state. And that's what exactly this music does. It's the beats of the music that actually puts your frontal lobe in a dumbed-down state. And how do we know this? It's scientifically proven that the beats of the music alone have a profound impact on one's mood and spirit. In fact, you, I don't know if you ever went to movies like Star Wars or all that. I would never go to those now. They're ungodly. But when I did many, many, many decades ago, um, uh, you know, you could just close your eyes and you could tell if a scene was going to be sad or happy or 
uh, anxious, right? Um, or you're anticipating something just by how the music was. Amen? Instruments were not introduced for worship in the church until seven, uh, excuse me, several hundred years after Christ. They were not anywhere in the early church at all. Those attempts met with much resistance as it wasn't until somewhere between 500 and 700 AD that the introduction of instruments into the worship was successful. So the devil finally got the instruments back in the quote churches. So from the example of the apostles in early churches, we find no authority at all for the use of instruments, musical instruments. In fact, they completely forbade them to be used. Shouldn't we follow what the Bible says? Amen. Stay with me. We have a stronger, a stronger argument even still. John 8, 32, and I do this because I love souls. I'm loving my neighbor as the Bible has told me to do. And I pray that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. I got set free about six years ago from this deception. And I've never, I mean, just like a big weight was lifted off of me. I didn't have to worry about all this music and this and that. I sing from my heart. I worship the Lord and also what I do. Not just uh, how and who I sing to, I sing to the one and only true God, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. The most common justification for the use of musical instruments other than the human voice was that they were allowed in temple worship. You get some apologists and people say, hey, you know, they, the Old Testament we say all the time. And of course, we are not to discount uh, the Old Testament in totality. No way. But there are certain things that were fulfilled and that were done away with. Listen, the things of the tabernacle and temple were, quote, patterns of the things of heaven now let's read hebrews 9 23 amen hebrews 9 23 says it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should with these um but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these amen so we see right there there's a better pattern amen let's continue they were the shadow of which things in the church of Christ are the substance. The incense used in the temple was a shadow of our prayer, Revelation 8, 3, 4. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with prayers of all the saints unto the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. And the blasphemous Catholic Church still uses incense. Of course, we know the blood of bulls and goats was a shadow of the sacrifice of Jesus. We can read that in Hebrews 9, 13, and 14. You can go to that yourself. I'll let you do a little homework. The instruments in the temple were a shadow of the ultimate instrument of worship, which is a human voice making melody from the heart. If one insists the use of musical instruments in worship, then they must insist on the use of instance while we pray, washing our hands and feet before entering the building, the church, and using oil lamps for lighting inside the building. We're not to go back to the Old Testament uh, ceremonial law. Jesus did fulfill uh, this ceremonial law when he gave himself on that cross. God always knows best, as I said before, and if we love him, we must obey him. John 14, 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Can an instrument speak? Or make melody in the heart, as Ephesians 5, 19 says. Let's read it. It says, the New Testament now, speaking to yourselves in psalms and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. An instrument can't do that. Does it teach and admonish, as in Colossians three sixteen? Let's read it. Let the word of Christ, Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. You see that? Singing with grace in the heart, in your heart to the Lord. Like the human voice, can, 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 can the, an instrument teach and admonish, make melody in the heart or speak? No, no way. We need to follow the teachings in the Bible, not man-made traditions. Paul warned the Christians in Galatia against going back to the things of the Old Testament for their hope and worship. Galatians 3, 24 to 27. Let's read it really quick. Galatians 3, 24. That we're father law, law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under the school, under a schoolmaster. 
For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as you have been baptized in Christ, you must put on Christ. Amen? Every wolf in the church, oh, excuse me, saying that those who did so have made Christ of none effect and have fallen from grace. Galatians 5, 4 says, Christ has become of no effect to you. What, so whosoever of you are justified by the law, which is a ceremonial law, you have fallen from get, uh, grace. Every wolf uses ungodly contemporary Christian music as part of their great deception to keep deceived souls in the pews. They entertain the flesh and make no mistake about it. This is deliberate, and we see it all the time. Um, they entertain the flesh. You can see everybody getting excited. And what they'll do is they'll use this at the beginning of their, quote, church service. And some, again, I've gone to dozens of churches in my lifetime, uh, all these false churches, right? And they'll use it right in the beginning to get everybody going. And then they'll either take the collection for their false tithes right after the music is starting to wind down but they'll still play it and then they'll start cranking it up again to do one more song while people are giving money see it's deliberate or they'll do the music first you know their 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 little mini rock concert their blasphemous rock concert at the beginning of the quote service so their worship time they call it and then they'll do the 25 30 40 50 minute whatever mixed sermon from the false pastor Talk about, you know, football and everything, you know, mix in the world, an enemy of God that pastor is because he's not preaching real repentance and holiness and telling people to go out and to evangelize. I've seen it. I've seen it a thousand times if I haven't seen it at all. And then uh, what happens is if they take the collection after the pastor speaks, what's the first thing they do? Now, you, I hope this is clicking in your mind. What do they do? They call up the, quote, worship team, and the music starts off again, and then they ask for money. Come on, worship team, we're going to take the offering. Now, why do they do that? To entertain you and to put you in a trance, so you'll give more money. We have another study on tithes down below. You don't give that to your pastor, by the way. That's for the poor. But anyway, uh, we pray that this edified you. Um, when studying for this, I thought I was going to do more on the scientific part of this, but we already have that down below, and um, we have hours and hours. We have, I think we have like two or three hours of audio and plenty of stuff written down, too. So I pray this edified you. I don't want to go on any longer. I try to keep these short exhortations in this uh, series quite short, um, but I pray this edified you. If there's any questions, reach out to me on my website. And uh, remember, Jesus is Lord. Not just your Savior, he's got to be your Lord too. If you don't obey him, you go straight to hell. Amen? We must live Matthew 5, 48 perfect. For those that are complete in the Lord and that are obeying his commandments and are friends of God, he's only friends if you obey him. Amen? John 15, 14 says, You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. And we see here that Jesus seemingly only commands us to sing what our voice is in the New Testament. Amen? Until next time, keep your hands to the plow, saints, and those that are not saints of God, I pray you repent and come to the Lord.